So I've been catching up on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee hearings. And this hearing, the one about the FSA's improper payments, has me really pissed off. The FSA, for those lacking civic awareness, is the Office of Federal Student Aid, which is the government branch responsible for handling student loans and federal grants. If you've ever filed for FAFSA, you've dealt with the FSA. Now these chuckle fucks at the FSA think it's perfectly fine to lose six billion dollars. That's six billion dollars of taxpayers' money. Of my money. Of your money. They lose that money and it's all just no big deal. If your bank account, assuming you're not someone like me who spends all their money too fast to save it up, but let's say you have a savings account. What if your bank lost five percent of your savings account every year? You'd be pissed and you should be. This is no different. The money that is lost comes from somewhere. Have any idea where it might come from? It comes from our fucking paychecks. Now these fucking morons who lost the $6 billion are led by the chief operating officer, James Runcie. Mr. Runcie is, or was, we'll, we'll come back to that, but he was the head of the FSA and the person who was accountable for the performance of his department. And what a performance, I might add. For the past four years, at least, the FSA has failed to meet their performance goals as set by the Inspector General. Not a big surprise when you consider the FSA lost six billion fucking dollars. Well, now we get to the oh fuck that part of the story. You see, the FSA is a performance-based organization, a PBO. Don't you love all these fucking acronyms? As a PBO, they use incentivized bonuses to motivate those who are underperforming and to reward those who are performing at goal. Well, that's how it works everywhere else, at least. This bloated, federally funded, parasitic worm Runcie and other fuckwits working under him received their performance bonuses even though they failed to meet any of their performance goals. Well, fuck that. In the six years, and remember, four of those at least, they failed their performance metrics. In those six years, Mr. Runcie, the head of the FSA, the accountable person at the end of the day, took home f over $430,000 in bonuses for his performance. What the actual fuck? In his place, the polite and articulate, yet full of shit Jay Hurt, the program accountable official for improper payments, who by the way also received his performance bonuses, he comes out and blames the system in which they use to set goals for being too variable. That's like blaming a ruler for your short dick. These people, these government-employed, tax-funded, bloated, parasitic fuck, don't give a flying fuck what happens to the taxpayer's money. Your money! They just collect their paycheck, take home their performance bonuses, and sing kumbai fucking ya. Fuck, don't take my word for it! Look for yourself! And I'll have you know, it takes a lot of fucking work to take a two-hour hearing and condense it into a cohesive six-and-a-half-minute fucking clip. So you're fucking welcome. Improper payments is an important topic that doesn't get enough attention and is also critical for us to get it right. We're looking forward to speaking with the head of FSA today, but regrettably, he resigned 24 hours ago. Department of Education Inspector General is here to report for the third straight year the department is not in compliance with the Improper Payments Elimination and Recovery Act of 2010. The Department of Education Inspector General has repeatedly reported on the Department's noncompliance with Improper Payments Information Act of 2002, the Impro Improper Payment Elimination and Recovery Act of 2010, and the Improper Payments Elimination and Recovery Improvement Act of 2012. We must understand how the Department can improve its evaluation and targeting of improper payments and how it fails to comply with the law. In this case, three of them. Uh, FSA did not meet three of its performance goals, Mr. Hurt, uh, two of which specifically related to customer service. Um, there are only two performance metrics that evaluate customer service, so FSA did not meet either of its customer service goals. Just walk through it. $144 billion across government. The agency that's, that's maybe one of the most egregious offenders of overpayments is the Department of Education two laws they don't comply with, that trend is going up. The guy who's responsible is asked several times to come in front of this committee, and instead of coming in front of this committee, he up and resigns, and to add insult to injury, he's been receiving bonus payments the last six years a total $432,815. This is amazing. That's why, we have this, this is why we have this committee, to get to the bottom of these kind of things. But Mr. Runcie should be in front of the committee, and frankly, whoever was responsible, my guess it was Mr. Duncan who was responsible, ultimately, 
uh, the former Secretary of Education in allowing these bonus payments to be given to Mr. Runcie should be in front of this committee as well. This is a performance-based organization, is it not a PBO? Yes, it is. All right. So that means compensation is directly related to performance. As I understand it, yes. Okay. So, so let me ask it a different way. Compensation should be directly related to performance. Yes. So have you seen any correlation between the compensation and the performance? Because I cannot find any. And so I'm, I'm just trying to get to the facts here. I'm not privy to compensation. So who's overseeing? Is that you, Mr. Hurt? Are you overseeing whether people get the proper compensation based on performance? No, per performance. I, I didn't think so. So who is? The, the performance evaluations for the chief operating officer would be determined by the, the department's senior leadership. Did you get a bonus? I did, sir. Performance bonus? Yes. So Mr. Runcie said that improper payments are all your responsibility. Is, that, is he accurate with that? I am the program accountable official for uh, improper payments related to So why did you get a bonus then paid to you based on these what I would call abysmal results? We don't have sufficient randomly sampled uh, numbers of, of reviews and, and audits to be able to produce a statistically valid uh, estimate. Um, we would have to make a, a management decision to divert our resources from um, going after improper payments and, and assessing liabilities uh, to coming up with a better estimate to do that. So what you're saying is you, you'd have to take time to figure out how to measure if you're doing a good job or not? We'd have to take money away from finding improper payments to be able to produce a better estimate. All right. And so would you say that having 7.85 percent of improper payments in the Pell Grant program is a good job? It's a number we need to address for sure. Is it a good number or a bad number? It's a bad number. All right. If it's a bad number, at what point is it a good number where, where Inspector General Ty can applaud you and say this is great? The, the only way to produce a, a statistically accurate number is to divert our resources from finding improper, actually finding improper payments and bringing down the real amount of improper payments to producing a more valid estimate. So what is success going forward? So let me put it more bluntly. If you're going to get a performance bonus, at what number do we peg that to? It, it, it's hard to pay, peg it for improper payments to a number. Well, uh, it's not hard for the American people. The American people said if you lose over $3 billion, they would think that you should get a zero performance bonus. So what's the number? The estimate is, is, is variable based on the methodology, so I can't come up with an okay, a here's, number, sir. Since we do have oversight capability, here's what I need from you, and I need you to take this back to the Secretary and make sure that we get it. We need to know the matrix for what performance, good performance, excellent performance, and poor performance is going to be for your senior management. For the new COO, whoever, whomever that may be, for yourself, for the others, and we need to understand what the matrix is. We need to understand where customer service comes in and what it factors in with that as well. And if I ever hear about government officials not being willing to meet with key stakeholders because they're too busy collecting their check, you know, there was a song in the 70s, I, you know, I'm, I'm dating myself. But it seems like that Mr. Run Runcie could be singing a song, Take the Money and Run.